first, we will take a trip to Lafayette, Oregon to explore an old historical urban myth. Then we head to the coast of Oregon, where we meet our Oregon modern day witch. She is a cosmic and nature witch. If you ever get a chance to visit Lafayette, there is an old abandoned cemetery called Lafayette's Pioneer Cemetery. It is a mysterious place because it seems like the weather changes when you're around it. Let's hear from someone who explored the cemetery in their own words. When I was there, it was hot, but around the cemetery, it was cold, and the temperature change was not slight. There was a dominant change where you went from sweating to needing a jacket. Now, there may be an explanation for this weather change. The area may be right under a downdraft or other weather phenomena. I did not have any equipment with me other than a camera, so hard to say what caused it. I did not get much of a feeling walking up to the gates, but once I entered the cemetery, I did get a heavy sense of awareness. It was like someone was aware I was there. On top of that, the cemetery is overgrown with dirt roads, so the creepiness does set in. The path through the cemetery ends at the top of the hill. I stopped there for a while, taking in the area to see if I could feel or see the witch who haunts the cemetery. The story is tough to confirm because records of those times are not available. What is known is in or around 1850, the town folk accused a woman of being a witch. The punishment was hanging. And that is what the town folk did. Yet before her last breath could be stolen from her, and on the eve of her hanging, the woman cursed the town of Lafayette. By my word, the city would burn to the ground three times. Her body was buried in what is now Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery. Since her hanging, the town of Lafayette burned once in 1857, and then a second time after that. A third burning has not yet happened, yet some wait for the curse to be served fully in the city of Lafayette, for the curse can only end with the town burning one last time. Now I can't claim that I saw the witch of Lafayette, felt her touch or heard her whisper. Perhaps I was not a threat to her. Or maybe I tried to help her instead of harm her in a past life. Whatever it was that kept me safe from her wrath, others have not been so fortunate. Several reported seeing her standing just at the outskirts of a burial site. Others claimed she followed them. Still, others have seen her walking among the graves. The most interesting of all these sightings are those where the witch has defended her surroundings. Some people have stated they were chased out of the cemetery by the witch, only to find later significant scratches on their backs. The scratches are long and look like they were from a swiping action as if someone was slashing from top to bottom in a chase. There are some trees in the area with low hanging branches, so this could explain all this. When people are in a state of fear and fleeing, it is tough to feel any pain from something like branches scratching your body or an old fence tearing at your clothes. Whatever caused harm to those who have seen the witch, one thing is sure, they will not be returning to Lafayette's Pioneer Cemetery anytime soon. It's my pleasure and time to meet our Oregon modern day witch. She is sparkly, unpredictable, and a joy to be around. She enjoys her coastal solitude and calm. Let's meet Christian Nedapak. You're currently in Oregon right now, right? I am in Oregon, yes. A former Los Angeles, um, I don't want to say native because I'm actually from New York. Lived in Los Angeles, now live in Oregon. How long were you in New York before you moved to Los Angeles? Well, I grew up in New York. I grew up in Western New York. So, however, this is time to go Bills. <laughs> I grew up an hour south of Buffalo um, in, next to uh, a little state park called Allegheny State Park. Uh, in a little town called Salamanca. So I grew up in New York, but I have lived all over the place in Italy and Boston, in Seattle, then Los Angeles, and now Oregon. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. Okay. And you're by the coast, yeah? I am literally looking at the ocean right now. I mean, you guys can't see it. It's on, maybe through that window. <laughs> it's on the other side of my computer, but I am on the southern coast of Oregon, north of a town called Brookings. So let's go back. Um, in the past a little bit and sure. when did you start feeling that you had certain gifts that were like a little bit different from other people 
Like what age uh, would you start feeling that? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say that growing up, I was an extremely sensitive and creative person and also someone that always felt like I wanted to be a leader. I'm an Aries sun, moon and Venus. So it's like Aries, Aries, Aries. It's all about stepping out and leading. But I was also a very creative person. And like I said, very sensitive. So even though at an early age, I didn't realize that I had gifts, I knew that I was so in tune with nature and with other people and I could read other people. But I was also a child of the 80s. And as I put in one of my bios, you know, anyone that claimed that they were spiritual or that they had some sort of gifts like that, you kept that stuff hidden because people would think you were crazy and your parents might put you on medication, right? Back in that day, that was just not widely accepted. So I think that growing up, Um, I intuitively knew that I had these powers, but I didn't know what they were. And I also kept them very hidden until I would say even as far as like 2015, as I think, um, well, I started having my spiritual awakening very strongly starting in 2012, and it became a lot more intense in 2014. And that's when I actually started opening up to my gifts and having them, I guess, kind of explode out. Um, And then I spent a few years figuring out like, what are they? Um, Oh, I'm psychic. Oh, I'm intuitive. Oh, I can work with spirit and all of these other magnificent things that I do. So I haven't come to terms with having them, I'd say until recently, but I think that I knew early on in childhood that there was something there. And just like most people, I think I kept it hidden for fear of judgment. So let's talk a little bit now about uh, the kind of witchcraft you practice. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to first of all say that if we're looking at the word witch, I do call myself a witch. And I could say that I practice witchcraft. I could say that I practice spirituality. I'm not religious by any means, so I'm not tied to um, Wiccan, even though I think that's a beautiful religion. But I'm not really tied to any modality that has been created. My connection is more to nature. I think all witches are connected to nature, but I do feel that there is a distinction between witches who very uh, strictly practice ritual magic that has very specific rules. Um, A lot of witches might follow those rules that are passed down through their ancestral line or the, the area that they're from. There's Italian witches, there's Irish witches. For me, it's a little bit more natural and organic. And so my practices, I do a little bit of spell work, not as much as I used to, but now um, a lot of my work really involves just connecting to the land, connecting to the cosmos. The moon obviously is such a big entity, but I'm also very much into astrology. Um, I connect to everything on the earth plane, everything outside of the earth plane. I work with spirit entities as well. So I don't really know if there's a name for that. You know, I think most people would call it spiritual, but I still do refer to myself as a witch because I do very heavily practice magic, which to me is just being connected to this earth, being connected to the planet and the physical reality and the animals and the plants and also other human beings and the and performing magic, which is setting an, a very clear intention and connecting to all of those energies. Like if I'm gonna do a spell, I do it when Jupiter and Saturn are in this formation and really relying on the universe around me to support my power and enhance my power. And so I don't really have a specific name for that. Again, I'm not Wiccan, I'm not very traditional. Um, I'm also not very, I think some people might call it eclectic when you're pulling pieces from here and there. I just like to call it or refer to it more as like natural magic. You know, it's just being present in the moment, connecting to the things that are around me, connecting to the things that I feel, connecting to the cosmos. And again, utilizing all of those different energies and entities in my work to enhance my power and to enhance the intentions that I want to put out there for myself and for the world. At the base, a lot of witches are connected to nature, but I see the cosmos as an extension of nature. The earth is just part of a very big universe and all of these planets and all of these celestial bodies have their own power and together and their interaction together is something that we can really harness um, besides just 
just what we're feeling here on planet Earth. The word witch has been thrown around all over the place, mm -hmm. right? It, it's thrown around in a bad way, in a good way. What does that mean to you? That's a great question. I like to look at it from a store. If I look at it from a historical point of view, witches were men and women uh, from all walks, from all over the world. I think sometimes we think of like Celtic Northern magic and no, really like there's witches from all over the planet. Essentially, they were initially healers or people that had intuition, that had a knowing, even like way, way back in the day, um, in the book series I'm writing, we're talking about pre-Celtic magic that, that was used during the Bronze Age. And we're, you know, when we're looking at Druids, I would call them witches as well, but they were people that, like I said before, were very intuitively tied to the land and understood that like the trees held sacred knowledge, but they were also tied to spirit, you know, what they called the other world back then, um, thinking it was another realm and kind of is, but thinking that it was another realm on the planet when reality, like it could be anywhere out there in the universe. And they were also tied to the cosmos. So when I think of the word witch, it might be completely different from somebody else's uh, definition. But again, I see it as someone who is in tune with nature and the natural and cosmic elements around them and also has the ability to utilize that power and that connection and that energy to produce something to put an intention out there and that is the definition of magic continuing on is actively putting something out into the universe from that state of power and from that connection. So a witch is someone who understands the connection and someone that practices magic, which could be two totally different things, is someone who uses that connection to create something from that, yeah. You know, you're really into um, the divine feminine and the sensuality of, of you know, of life itself. Um, yes. Tell me, how do, you, how do you blend that into what you do? Ooh, so that, I'm also, like, I'm an Aries, but I'm also, like, I think I just mentioned this, I have all of these houses in the 12th house, or all of my planet, Aries planets in the 12th house, and I'm a Pisces Mars, so I'm very much Pisces as well, and uh, which really lends itself to, like, adapting to that divine feminine. If we look at what the divine feminine is, it's an energy that we all have. You know, women have it, men have it. It, it's totally not related to gender at all. And so this is the side of us that is creative, that that wants to dive into our intuition and connect. Like when we're out there and we're in nature and we're just at peace and still and feeling that connection, that is the divine feminine. The divine masculine is out there taking action in the world, being assertive. So there's the difference, right? It's being still, it's getting all of the energy, it's it's building the power, it's, um, it's making that connection. And so when I'm practicing magic or even when I'm writing my book series, that's also very creative. If I'm doing uh, something that involves a lot of creativity, that's how I incorporate my divine feminine is I basically surrender to the flow and the connection around me. Usually I am out in nature. I live in the middle of nowhere in Oregon, so I'm usually out in nature. But it is that, um, it, to me, it is just accepting that connection, feeling it in my body, allowing it to flow through me, um, and then opening myself up at that state. Sometimes I'm in a trance-like state because of the connection. You know, I feel so good. I feel so energetic. I'm like flowing. I'm feeling nature all around me. And from that state, I open myself up to spirit. And that is how, um, that's how I do a lot of my work. Like not all of witches work with spirit, but when I'm writing, I'm channeling when I'm doing a spell like I feel like I'm really channeling like what is the highest thing that I need to be doing right now um, what is the highest intention that I could have before I put it out there so incorporating the divine feminine for me is really just surrendering to the flow and the ease as opposed to actively doing something actively being assertive for me I like to let spirit tell me what to do and then I just kind of take action from that inspired place. And then that's adding in my divine masculine on top of it when I'm ready. So tell me in your spiritual practice, 
What are the different things you do to give back to others? To give back to others? Ooh, uh, I feel like I do a lot. <laughs> I'm just constantly, I'm constantly giving back. Well, I think first and foremost, it is just about being present. You know, our presence and our presence and our existence on this planet is a gift in itself. And I think a lot of people feel that they need to go out there and like give to charity, give their time, and all of those things are wonderful. But at the core of it, just being here on the planet as a human being is a gift in itself. And I would say first and foremost, going through the process that I did for the last 10 years of healing myself, healing my energy, healing all of the traumas and the things I've gone through in this life and other lives, healing my ancestral line, that has been the biggest gift because I cannot step out there it, it, when I step out there today, it's not like me 10 years ago. The woman 10 years ago was a completely different person. And I'm not saying I wasn't positive or energetic, but after doing all of that self work, me stepping out into the world now has such a bigger impact. My presence alone has kickstarted other people's healing journeys. And I would say that that is my primary gift is I am a catalyst for other people's journeys. And so um, the spiritual practices that I do personally, you know, waking up every day, meditating, doing my cards, doing my writing, going out in nature, all of those things incorporated into clearing my vessel, into continuing to clear my mind, clearing the trauma, again, clearing ancestral work. That is uh, the primary work that I do to be able to step out there into the world and become that catalyst. And then of course, on top of that, I'm constantly out there helping other people. I have a business where I do readings, I do soul readings, I do tarot readings, but I also very specifically do soul purpose readings where I look at people's charts, I talk to their spirit guides for them because a lot of people don't know how to do that yet. And I'm an open channel and so, um, a lot of times I'm just a, a clear vessel and an open channel to repeat information coming through me through that person's spirit guides or that person's ancestral line to them to help them uh, further along on their journey. So those are the main things. I do so many other things, but I would say those are the main things that I do um, to give back to the world. But I do really want to emphasize like anybody that's like, I want to give back, start with yourself, start with healing yourself. And that has a tremendous impact on everyone around you, even if you're not out there coaching or teaching or because I don't do any of those things. So that alone is a great place to start. So is there anything that you consider supernatural or paranormal that you come in contact with that has, you know, made you take a step back or kind of scared you and, you know, like, hey, I don't, I don't want to deal with that energy type of you know, type of response. Oh, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> a lot of times that comes from humans, but <laughs> there are definitely, I would say, um, I don't want to say shadow, but there are definitely darker energies out there, energies out, out in the spirit world that have a dark intent. And I don't like to say the word shadow because we all have shadow parts of ourselves that we don't accept. And there's a whole other world of working on our shadow selves um, aside from that. But there are dark energies out there. Um, whatever it is you want to label them. Some people might call them reptilian or whatever it is you want to call them that I've definitely had experiences with. So I've had experiences where, and I think a lot of people that go through that awakening where they're first starting to wake up and they're coming into their power I think there's a lot of energies out there that try to siphon that power from them and try to stop people and discourage people from waking up because the more light we have in this world the more it's going to shine on that darkness right um, but I have had instances where you know I'd be in a dream and all of a sudden I see like these crazy freaky alien faces that look like demons coming after me and I had to like wake myself up and I remember you know I'll do this often. I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while, I'll wake up and I'll be like, get the F out of my space and they'll leave. But um, it's that 
it's that crippling fear feeling when you interact with a spirit like that, that you're like, yeah, no, I don't want to have anything to do with this. And you can feel that they're trying to attack your light. Um, so I have definitely had those. Ex- I mean, this is why I don't watch ghost shows. When I watch ghost shows, even though not, ghosts are not all bad, it's just that sometimes these people will go in these really creepy places where people were murdered and, you know, da da da. And they're like, let's talk to ghosts. And I'm like, no, like that's where you're going to pick up the worst kind of energy. Like you don't want to attract that into your home because that energy can actually follow you home and it could kind of invade your world if you're if you're welcoming it in um but i think the important thing for people to know that if they do encounter energy like that that we have the power to say no and they must leave your space if you tell them to so if anyone encounters anything crazy be like me like i wake up and i'm like i like jumped out of bed once and like ran through my house and was like get the out of my house and i was like saging and within minutes like it was totally clear but some creepy experiences every once in a while. I do not work with dark energies either. So these are things that just like every once in a while they're gonna attack people and it happens. Yeah, and that's the thing is those energies only have power when they're in uh, in human beings, in human form, because the human then can take physical action, right? Like they actually can't hurt you offline, you know, out there in the astral, um, unless of course you're afraid and you're you're welcoming them in. But when they do interact with humans and they get stuck in humans, that's when they can actually do some damage, yeah. So what drives you through life? Like what what is it that really propels you, you know, just from your from your own personal standpoint in life that makes you feel great and it just drives you like a rocket forward? Mm, being creative. I am a total creative human being. Um, mostly right now I'm working on my novels. So it's when I'm writing and I'm just letting it flow. And I'm, I, it's like the process for me of birthing something. So whether it's a video series or a book that I'm writing, or even sometimes when I'm making a social post, I just open the channel and I let it go. I maybe go in and make a few edits and then I put it out in the world. That process is amazing for me. It's not even the validation that I get or anybody commenting on it, even though I love interaction with people, but it's the actual process of creating and seeing it through to completion. So not just like, I'm gonna paint for a day. Like if I'm like, I'm gonna write a book, like once I get the whole book done, I'm gonna be so happy and that's gonna drive me to do the next book. Um, But even like little daily milestones, like getting through this chapter or, you know, creating, I do like some creative hands-on work, like where I make wands with crystals and I make them look like real tree branches and I paint them and just having like, the process of going through that and the process of letting this beautiful creative energy flow through you and then seeing the end piece is always just, uh, it it lights me up. Um, and I love seeing other people's end pieces as well. So when I look at other people's artwork and I talk to them about how they create it, kind of gives me that same vibe as well as just seeing somebody go through the process of, of birthing a baby out into the world, literally create a baby and seeing it come to fruition is so exciting. So now that you, you mentioned your book quite a bit um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in reading it when you're finished. Tell us a little bit about the book and then um, where people can go to get updates. Sure. It is a book series called Era Song, and Era is Ireland and Irish, so it's Ireland Song in translation. And it's a fantasy series that I'm creating uh, that started off as a trilogy, but now it's like five books and then another series extension on top of that, maybe like nine books total. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going with what Spirit wants me to do, and they keep sending me information. But it's essentially a story. The main story, the first few books, are about a girl, Mary, who is half Irish, half English, and she is, it's 1846. It takes place during the Irish famine. That's the backdrop. So there's the famine, the oppression by the English. There's a lot of military force in the country at this time while people are starving and fighting for their lives. So that's the backdrop, it's a little somber. But it is a story of a girl who goes through her spiritual awakening that has a very traumatic experience happen early on in her life that I won't spoil because that's like the first chapter of the book and how that impacts her life and how it creates this, um, she's so 
afraid to be in her feminine that when she grows up, she was like me. This is actually my story set in another time. She is just totally in her mask, her toxic masculine. She's in a, she's a woman in a man's world trying to make it. And throughout the story, she learns what it's like to accept her divine feminine, to learn how to use nature, how to perform magic. She becomes a healer and a witch and how I'm not going to again spoil it and how that relates to her helping the Irish people and the situation that's happening there. Um, it is a fantasy so it's kind of like it's a little bit more like magical realism where I'm playing on nature magic and things that people can really actually do but then I do add in a little bit of um, fantastical elements. I have like this ancient cult and um, mythology plays a bit into it as well. The whole story is based, based on um, entities from mythology coming back and, and how they're interacting with humans. Again, I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's essentially a story about a girl that has a spiritual awakening to her divine feminine and how powerful that is for everyone else around her. And again, that's my story told in another time. So I'm really excited to share it. Um, it is called Era Song, E-I-R-E-S song so you can go to my website or you go to Kristen Nettopack. Uh, right now I'm really only posting on Instagram because there is no book I'm in the middle of writing it but you can kind of see like all of my posts about the story um, the pilot I wrote a while ago because it was a TV show before it was a book won a bunch of awards so I've got some little snippets there but because it's in the works you can't really find out a ton about it um, I am updating my website or I'm in the middle of building a website so the website is actually going to have a lot more information once that's up as well but it is still in the works still being written so people are just gonna have to follow along until it's published <laughs> and I gotta tell people it's not like pe I love fantasy but it's not high fantasy it's not swords and wizards and dragons or even like a magic system that doesn't exist I try I really tried to pull in real magic so I like to say it's fantasy but it's not really fantasy it's fantasy in a sense that these things didn't actually happened during that period maybe maybe they did but um it is real magic so a better word is magical realism you know if that were that is like a, a sub genre but uh that kind of gives people more of a sense of like oh this is actually going to be a little bit more real and the, and the reason i say that is because one of my goals is not just to write this book series but to write the book series in a way that people take the journey with the main character and become curious about magic, magic that they can actually go out and practice right now. And I want them to come to my site to learn more about magic and also um, the Magic Grove, the group that I run, I want them to come and, and be curious about their own healing abilities and their own um, gifts and their own path to healing themselves and so I have a whole network of men and women that I work with that are healers and shamans and coaches so that they can read the books be curious about magic and then if they want to go down that path and they want to heal their own vessel I know tons of people that they can work with so that they can sort of open themselves up to be like the most clear channel as possible like anyone can perform magic but the more clear your body is the more clear your mind is the more power your magic is going to be so it's actually like an extended journey that I'm trying to create here outside of the books and that's why I'm trying to make it as real as possible we're going to do a tarot card reading oh yes my question is is will our paths stay aligned and will we continue to work together now and into the future oh I love that well I'm going to tell you before I do the cards um, I immediately am getting the energy that you are a divine masculine that is here to hold space for many divine feminines. So I think that's actually the, one of the messages that you need to hear right now is that you, you know, you're doing this series of witches. That is something that has been completely must, misunderstood through all of history. Um, and I think that that is such an important task that is that to be held by uh, a masculine in allowing these women to come through and be on your show is huge right now because you are actually showing 
the other masculine energies of the world. And again, it could be masculine females, could be masculine males. Um, gender is not a thing here. So I'm always going to say the word feminine and masculine, but you are here to use your creativity. And I want to say, like, I see you as a father figure where you're kind of like branching out and holding space for the family. And that is everyone that's on your show. And so I think this right here is a perfect example of how we are combining efforts. You know, you had one of my readings and I helped you and now you're bringing me on the show to talk about my work. But I do feel that you're actually going to be doing that for a lot of other people, not just me. And so right now the energy is that this is going to expand. Like you, like this is just the start of it, but you might venture out and talk to some of the other people that I know or talk to some other people like me, but really it's about you holding space for the divine feminines so that they can come out and show their gifts to the world. And that's, that doesn't mean that you don't also have gifts, right? Like you have your healing abilities and you're going to have your clients as well. But, um, when I saw that you had the show, ooh, look at that, Woo, things are like falling out. Hold on a minute. Things are falling out already. But when I saw that you had the show, it was like, that is a perfect minute that is the perfect um opportunity and perfect example of you embodying your life purpose in being a creator and being the one that holds space for other creators right like didn't i mention that that you are a born leader that was actually your node was that you were meant to lead with compassion and sometimes that means being the one to hold space for other people so that they can come in and do their work. So let's see if we're talking about you and I in particular, I just feel that we're going to be part of a bigger community that gets kicked off, you know, and we're finding, um, Ooh, look at that. Okay. I'm going to show you the cards I pull in a minute. I'm going to pull three cards. I want to see what we got here. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. I think your show could actually get pretty big. Ooh, all right. So, by the way, I'm using the Darkwood Tarot, which I freaking love. Like, it's one of my favorite decks. And one of my besties, who is a guy, got it for me for my birthday, Stephen. So I've got the Star card, the Six of Cups, and the Queen of Swords. And so um, when I'm looking at these cards, the Six of Cups is immediately soulmate energy. It is like we might have known each other in a past life. Um, you, you don't strike me. A lot of times I'll meet men that have maybe wronged me in a past life and, you know, you feel that karma they've got to clear. You don't strike me as that type of person. So I feel that you and I have been in other lives together where we have tried to bring magic to the world but the world wasn't ready. You know, we, you might've been a witch in another life as a female, who knows? Um, you know, I've definitely been both male and female in other lives, but I do feel that we have this soulmate energy and the six of cups is a very happy soulmate energy. It's like the family is here. The family gathering is happening. Um, gathering is such a big word that's coming up right now because it's not just us. It's going to be an extended family of people that are here to help bring magic back to the world. And although you are a crystal healer i am very much sensing with this show that it could be potentially really big very specifically because you are talking to witches and you are talking about magic and you are unveiling magic to the world and that is actually one of my main purposes on this planet is to bring magic back to the world and to help people realize and understand what it actually is that it's not some like satan demon driven thing or something evil um, and to actually unveil what it is to practice magic, what it is to be a witch, what it is to be in your power, which is essentially what it, it is. Um, so I think that the two of us are always going to be in alignment because we are both bringing that energy back to the world. You know, you could have been a crystal healer and done a show on crystals. You could have done a show on shamanism, but you chose witches for a reason because you are here to help bring magic back to the world. And when I look at the star energy, First of all, this energy to me always means like stardom. It means like 
there is a potential for the projects that we're working on to get really big so that we are we have the possibility to go out and to radiate to as many people as possible and to shine our light and to share our wisdom and share our information but what i also see about this because this is in relation to you and i is that it's such a soothing energy again it's not karmic it's not like we're learning lessons you know we had anything to do with each other's deaths in a past life or anything like that and this comes after the tower card so like the shit went down in the tower card and now we have the star and this woman is dipping her toe into this beautiful ocean or this lake whatever that body of water is and it's this it's that pisces energy right it's that it's not always about being attracted to water as much as it's about being attracted to the flow and the ease of life taking a respite being creative being more flowing and i believe if i recall you are a life path six so it's all about creativity for the both of us it's all about um this is also a very divine feminine card it's about the support of the divine feminine and i think we're both doing that right now being a divine feminine but also you have a very divine feminine masculine balance which is amazing so you're again you're here to hold space for that energy to come through whether it's coming through from you or you are um helping support people like myself and then we've got the Queen of Swords. So what's really interesting about this is this is about writing. The Queen of Swords to me, she is the queen of communication. So whenever I get this, I always think of me as a writer, me writing my books, me writing my story. So what I see from all of these cards is that our relationship is a soulmate relationship and people you can have many, many soulmates in your life. Those are the people that are going to be aligned on the same mission that you are, or they're coming in to help you out, maybe in love or family. But in a business situation, it's usually people that are aligned with your mission on this planet. And I already spelled that out. So I see that we are soulmates. We have this beautiful flowing energy together where we're both interested in bringing the divine feminine back and very specifically with magic. But then the queen of swords energy is that it's all about communicating that out into the world. And I think that we are going to work together in a way, maybe my books get huge and I promote your show or your show gets huge and you promote my books or whatever it is. Like we're always going to be connected through magic, talking about witchcraft, bringing that to light because it's only, it's it's only the beginning. People are just now waking up. I mean, I even saw a video where somebody was like screaming at a girl for being a witch and thinking it was related to the devil. And I was like, are we still there? But we are. And so I think you and I are just part of a bigger collective of people that are promoting not only the divine feminine, but the, the women and men that are out there very actively bringing magic back into the world. So yes, I do think we're gonna stay in touch. I think we're gonna be part of the same clan, part of the same collective. Um, whether or not we do specific work with one another, other than something like this, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll have to see what happens. But I do think that we are part of the same collective and we both have the same mission to bring magic back to this world, which is pretty incredible. So I'm going to pull like one more card. Let's just see. They're like, pull one more card, pull one more card. Let's see what they got to say. Okay. Ooh, look at that. The Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups is, to me, it's like the emotional male. It's the, um, not only, so not only are we going to be helping people understand the divine feminine and women and witchcraft, but that in itself, especially you, <laughs> and I have a lot of Aries, so there's masculine energy. We're going to be helping a lot of men in this world understand their magic and their power and their intuition and their and how to embrace their divine feminine. That's when I see immediately when I see this card is like um, he's the knight of cups and cups is again the water sign, the emotions, the emotional depth. So we have, I mean, look at that. The queen of swords, swords is air, but look at that. We have the star the Six of Cups and the Knight of Cups. And those are all water signs right there. That's all about emotions and water and empathy. And I really just think we're gonna be helping people break out of their shell and open up to their feelings and open up to their sensitive nature and their empathy. And, and that is the divine feminine so that they can access their power. No matter how you acknowledge the unseen that guides and protects you through life, 
Some call the unseen spiritual guides, guardians, angels, God, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, and there are so many more beautiful things and spirits that can be mentioned. Always remember, all of it belongs to you and no one else. Don't let anyone tell you that your beliefs, practices, love of who you are is wrong. Resist those who preach others are evil without logically looking at who they are, what they stand for, and how they live their lives. It is a mistake to do anything less than that. The next time someone tells you that you're doing something wrong in a way you live your life, or there is an evil in the path you are following, perhaps they are doing the deeds of devils or evil work to get you to stop all the good you're doing by following your true path in life. Logic. It can be a friend even to those of us who are witchy. This has been a series of witches.